My friends, I have researched the globalist takeover program for more than 17 years, and this world is a very complex place, and that gives evil a lot of places to hide. But bottom line, we have a lot of collectivists who actually serve multinational corporations who are crony capitalists. They use government to shut down their competition and take over societies. Communist China and many other authoritarian nations have signed on to the UN Agendas 21 that was put into global law and ratified back in 1992. We are now under this. It means high taxes are on your business, your farm, but the insiders who have been selected, well, they're exempt. And this is happening all over the U.S., but also all over the world. I live right here in Austin, Texas, and I have just seen hellish activity where, where UN-sponsored groups have taken tens of thousands of acres of people's property without even paying them in some cases, and then turned around and built on it a few years later. I mean, this is just mafia saying, hey, we're taking over for the earth. They're shutting down our last Austin power plant. They've already doubled our prices the last few years, uh, saying it's for the earth, but it's really for General Electric and others that are set to make even bigger profits by shutting down their competition. We are being financially conquered. We're going back into serfdom and slavery. And this is the first of many reports we're going to go out and research and present to you here, because all around Austin now and all over the state and all over the country, they're coming in and financing people to run for mayor and city council. They're coming in with federal and international and Rockefeller money, throwing money around and promising a bunch of stuff and taking over the towns. And then jacking up taxes to shut everybody down but themselves. It's amazing. You can't even build a house in Austin unless you're part of the insiders and basically make payoffs. This is so scary to see this happening. Now, we're about to premiere... Uh, a report that's taken almost three weeks to put together by Melissa Melton and Aaron Dykes that they just finished minutes before airtime. Uh, Aaron Dykes and Melissa Melton, Aaron, you've got a lot of the research here in front of you. We'll do future reports on this, uh, but we're, we're, we're behind the eight ball here on time. Uh, from your research, I mean, I told you this was a UN takeover, but as usual, you went out and researched it and found, oh, my God, you've been very angry about this. You don't usually have a temper. Uh, what did you discover, Aaron? Well, I already knew it was Agenda 21 and that all these terms matched up with sustainable development, but I went and checked again anyway because they all denied it at this meeting that it had anything to do with the United Nations. But at two Nations. different meetings. Yeah, two different meetings that had anything to do with Agenda 21, even though it's patently Agenda 21, which was always meant to be implemented locally through the NGOs, and that's what's happening here. But it's the same people from Central Texas who tried to push toll roads on us and all the other garbage with light rail and trying to put us in these compact grids. Seizing already built roads and making you pay for them when it's far and run. Tell them how many Rockefeller foundations were involved. Endless. I've got a list here just of, <clears throat> well, just a few of the environmental related entities that Rockefeller owns or contributes to everything from Urban Land Institute, Sierra Club, Open Space Institute. You get the idea. It's about And again, the key is they get these laws passed locally by their operatives who they I saw an article where they've bought over 200 Texas newspapers just to get the toll roads in. They actually are buying the towns so that no one can resist them because all the money and control is in taxing you to drive down the road or live or have a well. It's all one central smart growth plan that they wrote at least a decade ago, and they're still implementing it. Even when the people said no, shouted them down at protest and public meetings, they're still... Texas they're polls are 99% against this. They're just doing it anyway, and they're at these meetings. And what you well, found, well, Melissa, tell road. folks about the Delphi technique, because you show the video. They said just by coming to these meetings at the cities, you acquiesce to what they're doing. Oh, yeah. They said <clears throat> there was a bullet point on one of the PowerPoints right at the very beginning that said just by participating that you agree with everything that happens at the meeting. And basically all of the questions were leading. Everything was leading and every all the answers were preset. So no matter what you chose, you were choosing Agenda 21. What did you make of the fact, Melissa, that, well, I mean, just repeat everything I've heard in the office and all the documents, that, that they're going, we don't know what that is. Oh, please. Oh, man, it, some of the footage we shot, it was just amazing how fake they seemed when they were saying this. It just, you know, it was very obvious that they knew what was going on, and they're like, Agenda 21, 21, what does that number mean? 
Like they were just acting totally confused. Meanwhile, you found the handbooks where they tell you how to deal with the public. Literal handbooks written by the NGO that works directly with the United Nations called Local Agenda 21. And it's the same. They call their their workshops visioning seminars, community forums. It's literally in there page after page. And how to so, deal with us. Yeah. It's, you were showing me all these, Aaron, because you dig into this stuff. Aaron's an incredible there's researcher. There's a few of them. The real bombshell one's only online. but. And then you went and interviewed the UT professor that calls his class. Tell folks. Yeah, I actually went and interviewed a professor who calls his class Agenda 21, and he says it's about collectivism. And he says it's about all of us need to learn how to lo live better with the environment. We need to be more ec ecologically friendly. But really, but that means giving society over to them. Basically, yes. You never hear them talk about GMOs, though. Mm. No, no, no. It's all, your carbon's bad, pay Al Gore money. Yeah, and we were told that, oh, this came out of the local communities, little towns with 10,000 people, that the mayor stayed up late at night to write these plans, even though they're directly out of the United Nations. And it's program. in every city in the country, in every town, and, and, and we've got them on tape going, no, we just thought this up. And then you go find out they're all working for the NGOs. And they say it has nothing to do with the national agenda. Clinton set up the uh, Council for Sustainable Development. Obama set up his own partnership for sustainable communities. Notice the name of this book, same exact plan. And it's all how to integrate traffic with housing as well as EPA regulations. And then they branch out into things like USDA. It's really that rural council where they're trying to take over all of the heart. And, and you watch the videos, word for word, it's all this. But they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. Tell folks about the professor at the end of the interview once the cameras were turned off. At the end of the interview, once the cameras were turned completely off, he and he waited for us to put them back in the bags even. Then he pulled out that he was, had, was a democratic socialist, and he noted that his father worked for the CIA, and he mentioned, he motioned to a paperweight that was had been sitting on his desk throughout the entire interview and basically put it in my face. What do you think that was supposed my to dad do? Works. I guess he was trying to intimidate me at that point because towards the end I asked a little bit harder questions, and I think he realized where I was kind of going with it when I said, well, Yeah, people no, are, these people, people are, are extremely authoritarian. It wasn't just him, Alex. There were grad students at these meetings who were part of these sustainable development classes. Oh, they've got a big career coming running our lives. But I tried to yeah. interview him, and the guy said, are you with the group? I'm not allowed to talk to you. And I was like, oh, they told you not to talk to us and he walked away and you yourself have a degree from UT yeah I do but I get treated like trash on the campus so I guess that's what being alumni is all about well uh, man I tell you this is amazing I want to just show people this this is from their own sites look at all these Rockefeller foundations each one of these <laughs> every one of them set up by these people see real power is in controlling everybody deciding what you can do, how you can live. Uh, it's a cute name like Nature Fund, but then you look at who's on that board. It's people from Bain Capital, people from Rockefeller uh, Foundations. It's people who run J.P. Morgan and are still on those boards today dealing with this land that they're going to turn over in some corrupt behind-the-scenes fashion. Yeah, well, people need to look at these books because this is what they're setting up right here. And you, again, word for word, what these people were pushing, who were funded by these NGOs, and they're 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 laughing at you, going, "We don't know what that is," because they know the general public is not going to read this. They're not going to look at this, and it's just so sad. And you know, maybe some of the people that work for them are useful idiot minions. The point is, the professor started saying the family was a tyranny. Well, that's standard. In Germany, they've already passed the law, no new homes for families. Families must live in communities, in dorms, with all these weirdo socialists telling you what to do with your kids. I mean, it's hell on earth. Hell on earth. Yeah, he, he pretty much said the nuclear family has its own brand of tyranny. And then he explained to me exactly how that was. And that driving in cars was a tyranny. Yeah. It makes it makes mothers subordinate to have to take their children to... Live. As if dad and mom don't both... I mean, it, it yeah, is yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, we know how the globalists treat women. We've only got about one minute left here before we go to this piece. I guess we call it Texas taken over by the U.N. or the U.N. Uh, conquers Texas. Uh, but again, this is everywhere. This is all over the country. 60 seconds, Aaron. I've got the map from HUD. It's mapped out almost every region in the U.S. It all matches all this congressional map. Oh, you Half the country off limits. You bet it does. But just in Texas, they've got the Houston greater area. They've got the Dallas-Fort Worth area and uh, Austin in a big triangle. It's all going to be gridded out. Almost nothing will be left free. That's that coming up in this report, Melissa. 
I just feel very sad for the people that go to these meetings. They think they're doing something really good. And they go in there and then they're told, this is your ver your vision for your community. But it's not. It's not their vision. They had nothing to do with it. It's, it's being imposed upon them. Great job, guys. And we're going to continue to go to these meetings and cover it. We're going to continue to document this. And, folks, all over the country, all over the world, it's the exact same thing. This is happening in your town right now. And you walk in, they go, by coming to this meeting, you agree to whatever we do. And you don't even get to speak in the meeting. You have a sticky note that you go and you put on the thing. And that's how the UN model works with NGOs. They have financed NGOs that let the public speak in fake town halls, but you don't vote. They have these regional governments funded by the feds, the globalists, and others who come in and then totally take over your society. Comments on that? I mean, that's exactly what we saw in this. I mean, the people came, they, they thought they were going to get a grocery store in Hutto, for example. And then when I went and asked the lady who was running it later, 94% of people here think they're going to get a grocery store. Are you going to add that into the plan? And she said, well, this is just for planning. We can't just make a grocery store. No, all they do is you know. they get you to sign on to controlling the land. And then Michelle Obama says, we'll end the food deserts. The feds are going to decide what happens in your town. It's all going to be insiders. I was talking to a fellow who helped at-risk youth. Uh, in fact, he trained over 100,000 people total over a decade in these classes. And he described how as soon as Obama came in with big government, all the little grants to help at-risk teenagers, people were just gone. And it's literally like mafia groups now in control of it. That's all this is. This is just mafia. This is just rolling in and saying, hey, we're the boss. We're the grasshoppers. You're the ants. Yeah, I called up the NGO, ICLEI, who works with the United Nations, because uh, Austin's a big ICLEI city. It's the model city for the world. We have the biggest carbon cut. Yeah, we're in the, in the heart States. of the U.N. takeover, because they know Texas was free, so everybody ran here to get away from big government, but they've landed their attack forces. And whenever the federal government gives out grants, they call up entities and tell them how to get the grants, so that's pretty insider. And they call it a consortium of a regional unelected government that works with some shell game of... Uh, environment. Our tax money and corporate money goes to the regional governments. Yeah, and it's sick, but they tell you that's accountable because it's mayors and councilmen. But but they cherry pick their minions to make up the board. Could Congress go and play a baseball game and start legislating from on the field? I mean, yeah, hey, we had 20 Congress members that came to the baseball game. They, we don't need that old government. We got 20 congressmen here. Yeah. yeah, but who flew them there? Who paid for the hooker in the hotel room? Good God, this is so unbelievable. Oh, okay, well, here you go. Uh, today, Texas, tomorrow, the world. Here is the report on InfoWars Nightly News. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. And I'm Melissa Melton. Agenda 21 is not a conspiracy theory. And while it may seem harmless or even helpful on the surface, it is a UN-inspired, banker-funded scheme to institute a global government from the ground up. Right here, right now, our country is being taken over in the name of sustainable development. Local environmental groups are meeting in towns across America backed by big federal grant money, but behind that, entities like the Rockefeller Foundation. Their sustainable community meetings are not only a takeover, but a buy-in to a planned society controlled by a psychopathic elite, all sold with a smile. So to find out more, we decided to investigate some of those local meetings taking place in Texas to find out about the dark deception behind this Agenda 21 scheme. They had growth on them so quickly and so heavily they didn't have time to plan. What is sustainable development? Uh, conservation of energy resources. People that live there maybe don't have to drive as much. Concentrated and balanced growth. The concentrated and balanced growth. And the kind of growth you want to see. To help you achieve the vision. Higher density mixed use development in the center of town. How compact or not is it creating this much more interconnected grid? The growth here is more balanced. Housing and jobs balance with the stakeholder committee's participation in line with the Sustainable Places Project. The Housing and Urban Development Department of the United States awarded Sustainable Communities Regional Planning grants to Texas giving $3.7 million to the Capital Area Council of Governments in a project that span Austin, Texas, as well as neighboring rural communities that include Elgin, Lockhart, Hutto, and Dripping Springs. The grant specifies guidelines for energy use and climate change mitigation, as well as the integration of smart housing, nearby job sectors, and integrated transportation systems. 
The members of the project we spoke with in Elgin were apparently unaware of HUD's related agenda to the larger Agenda 21 program. Agenda what? Agenda 21. 21. Uh, what's the number stand for? 21st century. And what does that mean? Well, Honestly, I mean I'm not familiar with it at all, so I couldn't comment on that. So I'm not sure what their criteria or their outline is or that. Respectfully, there is no national treaty that obligates local governments to follow Agenda 21. That just doesn't exist. That's a myth. We're promoting sustainable, responsible development. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing to do with the United Nations. I mean, you know, uh, if that's, if that's just paranoia, I'm sorry. In fact, there is an international agenda at work. Austin is a model city for the ICLEI. The NGO partnered with the United Nations to push for local Agenda 21 implementation. In the name of sustainability, they've taken on some of the most ambitious carbon cuts in the entire nation and are a model for energy conservation and zero waste. And unelected regional boards are drawing the rest of Central Texas into this international scheme, all in the name of sustainability. Among other groups, Smart Growth America and the ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability USA Group specifically congratulated the cities and towns receiving these HUD grants for sustainable communities and regional planning. So it is absurd to claim that there is no international agenda interacting with these local communities as they attempt to implement sustainable development goals. Well, I know a lot about uh, Agenda 21 and I don't have any concerns because I don't think this I, I don't think this project is driven by the international community or even by the national community. I think it's driven by Elgin, Texas. Except it's been implemented nationally under treaty and these grants are coming from the federal level. I think it's really dishonest not to admit there's an Agenda 21 motive. Sustainability is just about letting local communities decide for themselves. We had heard so much about what Agenda 21 wasn't, we decided to interview a professor that teaches it. This is Dean Almy an associate professor and director of graduate programs in urban design and landscape architecture at the University of Texas. Now in Texas, uh, Texas Triangle is one of the 10 identified mega regions of um, the United States. And the projections, which were pretty much just confirmed by the recent census data that was released, are that uh, populations in the Texas Triangle will double in the next 20 to 30 years. And one of the big problems, of course, is that it starts to create new towns, new communities, but are they really communities? <laughs> are they really towns when they're all sort of evolving in a really short time? He teaches Agenda 21 courses at the university. So the course I teach, um, which I call Agenda 21, really deals with the question of um, sustainable urbanism. How do we begin to sort of build the city more sustainably moving forward. What is Agenda 21, kind of a brief overview, and why you feel that it's an important plan? Um, well, it was a resolution of uh, the United Nations um, where a number of countries toge got together, ostensibly in, in, in Rio, also called the Rio Declaration, Rio um, to begin to look at the way in which humans were occupying uh, the world, the state of the world, the state of civilization in the world, how we were using resources, whether uh, the consumption of resources and uh, global development was being achieved um, ecologically and equitably. And when recently asked about the UN's plan by a San Antonio-based news station, he was quoted as saying, it's changing the status quo of how we operate as a country that is developing and so it's threatening to some people. Urban design by its nature is about the collective good and isn't necessarily about the freedom of any one person to do whatever the hell they want. So I was going <laughs> to ask you if you wanted to talk about that quote a little bit. Well, I mean, already, you know, if we're looking for code words, okay, so already in that quote is the term collective, which, you know, a conspiracy theorist could, could somehow associate with, you know, I don't know, the Soviet Union. <laughs> right? And that's not, that's not the intent, you know, collective just means to get us together as a society. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of stand behind that actually. Cities are not individual constructs built by single people. Cities are collective constructs where we all live together and we have to balance the needs of individuals and the 
needs of collective society. And cities, by their very nature, um, would be very difficult to uh, construct and manage and develop if they were all sort of um, politically anarchic. <laughs> Agenda 21 sustainable development visioning meetings rely on the Delphi technique, a manipulation tactic wherein a facilitator ensures a public forum goes as planned with the predetermined outcome already decided upon by those who ultimately called the meeting. The Delphi technique was created by the Rand Corporation in the 1950s for the U.S. Department of Defense to use as a psychological weapon during the Cold War. While community feedback is encouraged, the final outcome is driven by leading questions and preset answers. These same exact strategies were outlined in detail in the local Agenda 21 handbook. We saw this at both sustainable development meetings we attended. No matter what answer a community member chose, it all fed into the Agenda 21 plan already underway. The project planners admitted they weren't working with a blank slate but we're instead following a plan already mapped out by so-called stakeholders. What we want to be really clear about is that we're not starting from sort of um, an empty slate. Your, your community has done a lot of work in setting in place lots of plans and policies like the comprehensive plan. We're plan. planners. We've been involved in um, projects mostly in central Austin um, and in, around that area. Uh, we worked on the Miller redevelopment for many years, and we're still working on it. Uh, the downtown Austin plan, uh, we're working on several master plan communities around the region. A lot of our focus on urban infill and redevelopment. And have you ever heard of Agenda 21? Um, yes, but just recently. Is this, is this a part of that plan? Uh, no. Is it affiliated in any way? No. The reason I ask is because you use a lot of the same terminology, visioning workshops and sustainable development, and, and a lot of well, that falls under that plan, and I just didn't know. If well, that's, that is a very traditional planning talk from the last probably 30 years. So we always talk about, you know, having a vision. What is the general big picture vision? But there's a larger agenda going on. I mean, this is a regional development. It didn't start here in Elgin. These proposals didn't originate here in Elgin. They're being done in other cities. I think these proposals did uh, originate here in Elgin. Why are all these plans springing up all at once at the same exact time, all over the country, all over every city, though? It's not a coordinated effort. Well, I, I don't want to be contentious with you. I would just say that I think that's a myth. I, it just, they're not springing up all over the country. In this whole region, there's four cities looking at it. In fact, the sustainable communities were popping up in nearly every major metro area across the country, all funded by HUD. And these sustainable communities are pursuing the international agenda under President Obama's Partnership for Sustainable Communities, joining together the policies and regulations of housing and urban development, the Department of Traffic, and the EPA. I actually went to my first sustainable development meeting mm -hmm. last week. They received a federal grant from Obama's Partnership for Sustainable Communities, and they seem to use a lot of the same language in Agenda 21. I didn't know if you knew about those sustainable meetings that have been happening around here and if those are somehow connected. Well, there are a number of, of layers of sustainability. I mean, almost to the point where the term itself is sort of overused. But here at the School of Architecture, we have a Center for Sustainable Development, okay. which does get grants um, from foundations, um, sometimes from federal government, usually from philanthropic foundations. And they, become, they are a clearinghouse for a whole series of different initiatives. Texas has been faced with so-called smart growth proposals for well over a decade now. For years, bureaucrats in the Texas area laughed in the faces of activists, even as they gave passionate speeches defying the implementation of toll roads and other unnecessary infrastructure already owned by the state of Texas and its citizens. Instead, unelected regional boards like Campo moved the measures forward as best they could, while insiders who amounted to little more than thieves skimmed off the top and made millions off of secret deals. And yet we see some of the same regional players pushing for further development in the name of sustainability. The Central Texas vision for growth was directed by CAPCOG, Trust for Public Land, and Envision Central Texas. 
These entities, in turn, are shaped and steered by countless environmental groups controlled and funded by the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation, George Soros, and Ted Turner, among others. Their alignment with Agenda 21 is well documented. Sustainable development was coined by the United Nations to mask a covert takeover at the local level. Land conservation and smart growth planning have been used to subsidize insiders allowing development to be hijacked while the system picks winners and losers, reaping the profits at our expense. Everything in green is the protected area. So you see there's not really much protected areas 15 years ago. Two years ago, this is the work that we did. Um, all this land was purchased by cities or by, by the city of Austin or the county, and we use our funds and our political clout to encourage the city to um, purchase these lands for protection. Has any of that been uh, developed on? Yes. Um, so the so this does not mean there is no development. What it means is that the development is done in a sustainable and ecologically friendly way. By implementing Agenda 21, it, it's a local implementation. It's from the bottom up kind of thing. That by putting all these regulations environmentally and putting them on the urban areas that you know, are usually the economic centers for cities, that you're sort of picking winners and losers in a way because you're saying that only people who will adhere to these things are allowed to develop. And so there's kind of a bigger agenda there with that. I don't know what, what your thoughts are on that. Um, I, I would turn it around a little bit. And I would say, I don't know that we're picking winners or losers. This is not a kind of environmental nepotism <laughs> that's going on. I mean, but I think it's a mistake to think that rules don't already exist everywhere. The United Nations has made its anti-private property stance abundantly clear. Quote, land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social injustice. The provision of decent dwellings and healthy conditions for the people can only be achieved if land is used in the interest of society as a whole. First of all, we have to believe that humans um, need to live kind of symbiotically with the earth, that we're not here to dominate the earth. You know, when the United States was founded and many of the original sort of authors and thinkers who wrote about, you know, society in the U.S. and uh, people like Thoreau, for example, there was a sort of idea that the U.S. was this great wilderness, that we could just go out and sort of settle the wilderness and be pioneers and live on our own and be independent. I don't, and I don't think it's like that anymore. I mean, there's very little wilderness left in the United States. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. It's based entirely on socialist control mechanisms. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. An end to national sovereignty, the abolition of private property, the restructure of the family unit, and increasing limitations and restrictions on mobility and individual opportunity. Professor Almy admitted plans to restrict travel were ecologically necessary, and his contempt for the family and Western civilization was thinly veiled. You know, the suburbs bring with them their own kind of tyranny, right? One is public space is almost non-existent in terms of real public space. There's lots of lawn right but real collective public space there's the tyranny I would argue of um, you know the nuclear family and not that that's tyranny in itself it's not but the wife having to drive their kids to every everything having to drop your kids off at school having to pick your kids up at school having to drive them to Little League having to everything is about one member of a family having to basically play a support role while another member works. And everything is sort of geared that way. And it's actually quite expensive. You know, so things like the automobile and the amount of infrastructure that families use to economically to support living in an environment dominated by patterns that are automobile dependent 
is a big problem. This is uh -huh. an Agenda 21 map that claims that that is what, if Agenda 21 was fully implemented, the United States would look like. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen I haven't seen that. this map before. Um, and this is something that um, opponents have said is the ultimate plan of Agenda 21. I didn't know if you had heard of this map or seen it before. I haven't seen the map before, but I know where some of the principles behind the map come from. It's trying to kind of um, suggest that if we were to develop networks, networks of, of um, water, networks of plant habitat, networks of animal habitat, networks of human habitat, how would these networks begin to interact? What areas would need to be preserved from development? There is a pretty great fear of this. I found yeah. a lot out there of you bet. this plan. And yeah. that it, it really will somehow end property rights, people's personal property rights, that it will end national sovereignty eventually and give it up to a whole global entity now that will kind of take control over everything. And that's kind of the general you know, you know what will end national sovereignty faster than some fictitious um, conspiracy based on a United Nations declaration? Um, major ecological catastrophe. You know, um, and and you know, to be honest, in my opinion, I think one has to come to terms with the fact that such things as global warming exist. If you don't believe global warming exists, or if you believe that man is on this planet to dominate the world, then uh, you don't care about these things. <laughs> it should be noted that the professor admitted to democratic socialist leanings once the cameras were off, and that his father worked for the CIA as evidenced by a paperweight he displayed on his desk during the interview. While he talked in circles on many concepts and seemed to contend that he knew what was best for humanity, he refused to acknowledge any nefarious motives behind Agenda 21. Most of the people here in Elgin don't know or care what Agenda 21 is. I don't care what Agenda 21's agenda is. Think about it. These local planners are trying to concentrate smart growth in small towns of barely 15,000 people in the second largest state in the nation, encompassing hundreds of miles of empty land. In fact, experts have even come forward to say that the world's entire population of 7 billion could fit here in Texas comfortably with no problem. It doesn't make any sense. But make no mistake, what does make sense is that these local sustainable development meetings are nothing more than a green mask trying to hide a global takeover in plain sight. Takeover doesn't even begin to explain it. There really are no words for this level of evil and greed. These are just front groups we've analyzed in the video today. But when you look at the real players behind them, the bankers, the people with connections to families like the Rockefellers, you begin to understand the true corruption, the real nature of evil, where mega wealth aligns with an agenda to destroy humanity and control our future for their gain. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Aaron Dykes. And I'm Melissa Mountain. This is real investigative reporting. This is real research. This is putting our necks out there against these groups. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing they can't stop, and that's you becoming informed and taking action. I guarantee you this is happening in your town because there is trillions of dollars in this. This is the whole ball of wax. Please get this report out to everyone you know. Please warn everybody this take, that this takeover is taking place. We can stop these people, but it's up to you. Learn how they operate. Learn what they're doing and stop this globalist corporate takeover. The globalists have gotten good at this. They've taken over so many third world countries, old world nations, European nations. They are tyrants. They've got a formula, but they have a playbook. They have a formula. We know their formula. And if we'll wake up to the fact that they're doing this, they're like, hey, we're just planning we're just, you know, city planning and, and social planning. Yeah, by globalists that have hijacked our country that are eugenicists. That's like saying, hey, this is just a meat cleaver. You know, I'm just hacking you up with it. I mean, what's the big deal? This is happening right now. So it's up to you to take action. I'm a reporter. I'm not a general. But I will tell you this is an info war. So if you want orders, here it is. Get out there and take these people on in the info war. They are absolutely anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-freedom. They are parasites from the word go who think we should thank them for running our lives. 
I know this, I declare independence, 1776 part two against these people. And I know you're doing that as well. The Washington Post, the New York Times, they all admit, oh my God, people are waking up to Gen 21. Yeah, it's real, but it's, it's a good idea for you. It's collectivism. It's communism. You're going to like it. No, we don't want it. Even if you were angels, we want our free will, but you're not. At the top, they're eugenicist, wicked, power-tripping control freaks. I'm Alex Jones signing off for this very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. The rest is up to you. So cry havoc and let loose the dogs of the InfoWar. Loose those arrows.